it's no secret that slow living is this really desired lifestyle for many people. I mean, I see it all the time on my social channels. People will be advertising a slow day in my life, a slow Sunday, etc. And while I do actually have a slow day in my life video planning to come up, I think it's important to acknowledge that living a slow lifestyle is often not attainable for most people. Pretty much everyone out there has to work a job to support themselves or family. And I know times in the past when I have been overworked and feeling like that I never get a break, seeing this concept of slow living advertised almost kind of aggravated me because in a way it's a privilege, right? Being able to live a slower lifestyle means that you're privileged enough to not have to work all the time. And I wanted to come on here and create a video that kind of gives everyone a way to embrace a slower lifestyle even when you're in really busy seasons of life. Because personally, slow living has truly changed my perspective on life and I am not, you know, living in a cottage somewhere, drinking tea and reading books five hours a day. I am a full-time student and a full-time content creator. I work 80-hour weeks quite regularly and frankly, I don't really ever take any time off. But at the same time, I really try my best to embrace this concept of slow living and doing so has really changed my perspective on a lot of things. So in today's video, I wanted to give you eight tips on how to live a slower life even when you're really busy because let's face it, most of the time, most of us are really busy, but that doesn't mean at least some aspects of slow living can't be applied to you and you can't take advantage of. So today's video idea was actually kindly given to me by my patrons on Patreon. I asked them what they wanted to see this week and this is what they voted on. So thank you very much to them for giving me their input and if you're interested in joining my Patreon, we do so many fun things. We have a book club, I do monthly hand-drawn bookmarks and reading trackers, and then in my second tier we have you know, exclusive content and all that typical stuff you'd expect on Patreon. The link is in the description if you'd like to learn more, but for now I will get on to the rest of the video. So today's tips are not exactly tangible tips, they're not really something that you can just flip a switch and do. I'd say a lot of them are mindset shifts, but in my opinion they're fairly simple and they definitely made a big difference in my perception of slow living even as a very busy person. Setting your priorities. That's tip number one. There are only so many hours in the day. Human beings are hardwired to need X hours of sleep every single night. You need meals at certain times every day. You can only do so much with a given day. Setting your priorities about what things really matter during those hours that you're awake. So yes, things like earning a living are going to be top at that priority list, but most likely you will have an hour or two somewhere in most of those days that you can choose what you're doing. And you know, you're only gonna have room for one or two more priorities at the top of that list and you honestly have to choose what's most important to you. For me, it's reading or painting or anything that's just slow and calm. That is such a big priority to me because without it, I just feel like I'm constantly frenzied. So those are top of my priority list and even just an hour every couple of days, that does help me embrace this slower lifestyle. Tip number two is somewhat similar to tip number one in that once you set your priorities, you need to identify your sacrifices. Honestly, that could be anything and it really depends on who you are and what you're willing to give up, if anything, and if not, that's okay. For me, a slower lifestyle meant and giving up a couple hours of TV time each week. I chose to dedicate that time to other things instead that I found helped me unwind better. Chances are there's something in your weekly routine that maybe isn't serving you as best as something else could, and that is, in my opinion, one of the best and first steps into moving toward a slower lifestyle is just sitting down and thinking about what parts of your routine can slash should be sacrificed in favor for a calmer side of your life. So this one is really the pot calling the kettle black when I say this piece of advice, but tip number three is letting go of perfectionism. 
You see so much content online that is showing you that slow living means that you are doing nothing all day. You are not working. You are drinking endless cups of tea and burning candles all day and going on long leisurely walks. And while I love filming videos like that, and I do, don't get me wrong, the reality is if you're going to embrace slow living as someone who's working full time or taking care of a family or whatever it is, you're not going to have many days that look like that. Sometimes they'll happen and they're amazing and when they have come for me, I have loved them so, so much. But perfectionism and working something into your already busy routine just don't mix. Two minutes of something is better than no minutes of something. Two minutes of a slow and calm mindset of reading, of relaxing, whatever it may be, is better than zero minutes. And even if it isn't a whole day of slow living, you are curating that mindset in yourself and you are reaping the benefits of it in your mind and your soul. When you're getting into slow living for the first time, I think it's pretty easy to feel discouraged and say, how is this possible? I am just too busy and I have plenty of days like that myself, but I'm here to tell you that, like I said, five minutes is all it takes. And if you seek this perfect slow life, you will never be satisfied with the slow life that you have. And then you're defeating the purpose of a slow life because you're always working towards something new. And the point of slow living is just being happy with where you are. Tip number four is somewhat in that same vein and it is also something that personally I have been working on a lot this past year. And that is to stop comparing yourself to other people, to other things, to fictional worlds, whatever it may be. Stop comparing yourself. We are individuals. We are not meant to be like other people. We are literally designed to be perfectly unique human beings. That is the basis of our genome and that is what makes us so very beautiful. And if you're comparing yourself to these other people who seemingly have a very slow lifestyle, you're never gonna feel satisfied with your own, even if other people might be jealous of yours and it's just this vicious, terrible cycle that I see and experience all the time on social media. And maybe you're someone who doesn't struggle with comparison and if so kudos to you my friend you've got it but i know i do and i think a lot of other people do as well and in the end comparison like i said is really only going to negate your journey towards slow living because slow living is about embodying who you are and where you are and if you're comparing yourself to who someone else is and where they are you're never going to get to where you want to be if i could give any advice really to anyone it's do not ever compare yourself. You are perfect the way you are. You are doing your best. You are you and that is perfectly wonderful. So my fifth tip or piece of advice is actually a bit more tangible and that is to set your environment. So for me, my environment, the places around me is really, really important to my lifestyle and my mindset. I'm a homebody and I spend a lot of time curating specific vibes in whatever room I'm living in. As a college student, that changes every couple of months, so it's really never <laughs> constant, but I do put a lot of effort into making sure that wherever I'm living has a slow, calm, cozy vibe. And a few tips I have for that are house plants are always something that make me feel connected to the earth and make my dwelling, whatever it may be, feel very grounded and calm. Warm lighting. So get a lamp that uses a non-blue LED light bulb, just a normal light bulb that gives off kind of an orange light. And candles, of course, if you're in a place that allows candles to burn. Another thing I love, you probably see them in my videos all the time, are these string lights that I hang up on the wall. I think they give off the coziest orange glow and I just love them. And in general, any decor that feels most personalized to you and makes you feel comfortable and happy in the space you're in, that is the key to living a slow life because that way you're in a space that allows you to slow down and calm down and you're not constantly feeling like you need to seek that out you know by doing something else or being somewhere else you can just exist where you are so tip number six is all about boundaries boundaries are really important in every single aspect of life and i am like all these other tips still working on setting boundaries in my life but if you're someone who really wants to seriously start pursuing a slower lifestyle, even just a slower mindset, the way you think about life and approach rest is setting boundaries. For me, one of my boundaries is 
proximity to nature. I need it. I lived in a city for a year and a half and it was terrible for me. My mental health plummeted and I just, it was a boundary for me. As soon as I left, I told myself, I really can't do that again. I need regular access to nature and that is a boundary that I've set and that has ensured that I live a slower lifestyle because now I have this access to nature. I can spend time in it, I can take and think and read and write while out in nature and that to me was a key part of really embodying this slow lifestyle. And for you, you know, your boundaries are gonna look like anything. It's super personal. You could set a boundary of, I need eight hours of sleep a night no matter what. That's a boundary and that is going to inform your lifestyle. So tip number seven of eight is mindset is everything. Like I was saying, there are gonna be times in your life where you are chock full busy. You're gonna be working from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed, go to bed and repeat. I know I've had seasons of life like that and I know for a fact that I have seasons of life like that coming up. The next two years for me are going to be the busiest of my life probably but that doesn't mean that you can't embrace slow living anyways. For me, slow living during those busy seasons looks like looking up at the tree leaves in the wind or in the sunshine as I'm walking home from class, or lighting a candle even if I have a really late night up working. You can find slow moments and calmness even in really busy seasons of life if you only train your mind to look for them. My last tip is my motto in life, and if there's anything that I want you to take away from this video, it is this. Tip number eight is find beauty in the small things. I have gone through some really difficult seasons of life in the past two years, and you know, difficult obviously schedule-wise, but also difficult mentally. I wasn't in a good place mentally, two years ago and now on the other side of it I can see that a lot of what got me through it was these really small simple joys that I found in the most mundane things like the sunlight streaming through my window in the morning even if I was stressed and rushing to class I always found just a second to acknowledge it and appreciate the beauty of it there are so many tiny moments in life that are just breathtaking and mind-blowing and just fill me with this sense of wonder and they make those hard days and those hard weeks and those hard years so so much more bearable because even when everything feels really dark and scary inside if you're able to see that beauty and that light that surrounds you it makes you feel not so alone and not so hopeless finding beauty in the small things has been my motto for two years now and i anticipate that it will be my motto the rest of my life because finding beauty in the small things allows you just a few seconds every day to find that inner peace and that inner calm and that inner slow that is the essence of slow living and with that you can slow live no matter what your schedule is you can live a slow life working 100 hours a week if only you remember to find the beauty in one small thing a day and you can live a slow life working zero hours a week and you can find beauty in a thousand things a day but no matter what as long as there's just one thing you are giving your brain that chance to slow down and appreciate and that is all that matters i want to acknowledge once again that slow living is a privilege and we don't all get it and i don't really get it in the traditional sense of the definition of slow living and my guess is most people don't right like i said if you're working a full-time job pretty hard to you know spend hours reading or doing whatever people who like hardcore slow live do but i do believe that there is a more reasonable definition of slow living and that is what i tried to define in today's video i really hope that you found this video helpful these mindset shifts have truly changed the way I think about life. If you've made it this far in the video, go ahead and comment below your favorite small moment that you've had recently, just some tiny thing that's brought you joy. And if you're struggling to kind of build that mindset of finding small things, I encourage you to start a daily record. Just one time a day, once a day, write down one thing that brought you joy or that you found beauty in. Just do that for a month and pretty soon you'll find that you're finding beauty and joy and small moments everywhere because once you open that door in your brain it just it floods out in the most wonderful way so thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed 
please consider liking and subscribing and I will see you soon. Bye.